In today's video, we're going to attempt to do the best we can in eliminating the color cast of this image. Now, color cast can creep into images, um, but one especially dangerous place is when you're shooting under fluorescent lighting. That can bring a pretty horrible sort of greenish, yellowish sort of cast to your images. In any event, we've got a nice color cast going on here. We have a lot of problems in this image. It's far too flat in terms of contrast also. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is change this into the LAB color space by going to Edit and Convert to Profile. Choose LAB Color from the drop-down menu. And don't forget to unclick Use Dither. Click OK. We're now in the LAG, uh, LAB color space. One thing I want to do is drag and click and drag out the info panel. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of numbers there analyzing our LAB numbers as we do our analysis of this image. Come back to the Layers panel, click here, and let's get Curves going. And I'm going to click and drag that out also. Yeah, we're just about ready to go here. Very good. Now, wherever I drag inside my image, um, I'm going to see numbers here. I happen to have this set up uh, so that I always see LAB numbers over here and over here will be the numbers of whatever color space I'm in. A lot of times I'm in RGB, so that's why I kind of leave this, never mind the fact that they're both LAB. We only need to look at one of them clearly. If you do want to change that, here's how you do it. Click there for the menu, go to Panel Options, and I have Mode, that is the one on the top left. What are those numbers, and what are the numbers on the top right? Let's come into the image and see what, uh, see where we are, see what kind of color cast we have. Um, if you're like me, the first thing you're going to say is that there's kind of a bluish color cast. But in trying to fix a color cast, the first and most important thing is, is that it's always nice to have a reference point. And by that I mean something in your image that you know should be neutral already. Fortunately, we have that in this image, and it's called snow. Snow should be white. I highly recommend that you take a look at our other video on LAB called LAB Color Space by the Numbers. Absolutely check out that uh, video first. Otherwise, you're going to be in danger of getting completely lost in this video because that's pretty much mostly what we're going to be doing is looking at the numbers. So I know that the snow should be neutral. And what that means is that in the A channel and in, and in the B channel, I should get zero. In other words, I don't, I don't want to be seeing negative num numbers in the A channel pulling up to green or positive numbers in the A channel pulling to magenta. Likewise, in the B channel, I should not be seeing negative up in the blue or positive down in the yellow when it comes to the snow. It should be zero, zero for the uh, A and the B channel. Let's take a look and see what we do have. I come right in here and... Now, what you see in the info panel, boom, you see two sets of numbers over there. We have not made any adjustments yet. That's why the first set in the pair is the same number as the second. You get 69, 69, for example, for lightness. Um, once we start making adjustments, that second number will change, but the first one will stay the same, so we can have a comparison. Look at the A and the B. Specifically, look at the A. This is the green and the negative we're getting a little bit of green in the snow, just a little bit. Now, how many of you, when you looked at this image, were going to say, absolutely, there's a green color cast in this image? Well, there is. Yes, it is primarily a blue color cast, as indicated by the B channel negative numbers. And those numbers, minus 25, yes, is a lot stronger than minus 7, but regardless, we're still getting uh, a little bit of green in there. I can kind of handle a little bit of blue uh, in the snow. That I can kind of deal with. If you want the story of your picture to tell a physical and or emotional coldness, blue is good. You do want a blue color cast. But green in the snow, I can't handle it. I don't want green in the snow. Absolutely not. Snow should never be green. And for a lot of reasons, it should definitely not be yellow. As we sweep across here, one of the things uh, that I'm seeing is that the numbers are barely changing, if at all, in the A and the B channel. I'm only looking at the color now. 
what am I doing? I'm going from like minus five to minus six. And the B, the blue and yellow channel is staying nailed at 25. I come up here in the snow. I'm getting very little variety in the numbers. I come up here in the snow, very little variety in the A and B numbers. If I come onto the wall here, I'm still getting very little variety. What am I getting in this whole image? If I come into the trees, I'm getting minus 7 and minus 16, minus 8 and minus 16. If I look at only the A channel, I want to sweep around the image because I want to see how much variety do I have in my color in the A channel. Well, I've got minus 3 there. I've got minus 6 there. That's a difference of 3. Minus 7. That's a difference of 4. Minus 9. That's a difference of 6. I, I think I saw a minus 10 in there somewhere. Yeah, I did. Minus 10. That's a difference of 7. So you can go all over this image and I'm getting a difference from the most extreme number in the A to the least extreme is, is like about six or seven units. And that's very flat. And the same thing is true in the B channel. Down here, I'm getting minus 25 in the B channel. Come around here, I'm getting minus 18. That's a difference of seven. 16, okay. Nine, I'm getting a variety of. So I'm getting a variety of about 9 or 10 or maybe even 11 or 12 in the B channel and somewhat less than that in the A channel. So this is proof of the fact that there is not enough separation in the color. The colors are flat and the brightness is flat. And the snow is pulling to green instead of being neutral. I don't even want to look at the sky because it's going to pull towards blue and it should be blue. And it is. It's minus 37, strongly blue in the B channel because it's blue and it should be blue. We've got to fix this image. Now, one thing we need to do, let's look at the snow here again. It's pulling into the green. It's pulling into uh, the blue. I need to get rid of the blue here. So what am I going to do? Let's take a look at the wall over here. Um, I'm getting minus 2, tiny little bit into the green and stronger into the blue. Now, if I want to make the wall neutral, in other words, zero, zero in the A and B, in other words, just white, well, what's going to happen to the snow? What's going to happen to the snow is it's still going to be a little bit blue. Look, if I'm on the wall here and I've dragged that minus 2A, which is green, down to zero, that's a change in units of 2, which means the snow will go from minus 6 to minus 4 in the A channel, it's still going to be a little bit green. Likewise in the blue, if I manage to drag this wall down in the B channel, it's going blue, minus 17. If I bring that down 17 points to 0, oh, it's still going to be blue. It's going to be minus 8. So I've got a decision to make. Do I want the wall white and then this is still going to be a little bit greenish and bluish. Or do I want to pull this down and remove the green completely and even try to get the blue out of there and pull it towards magenta? This is what I'm going to have to do. If I want to get close to zero, zero down here, in other words, completely eliminate the minus 25 in the B channel and bring that down to zero, I'm going to have to pull this in the B 25 units away from minus 17, which is going to bring it up into the plus a little bit, which is going to be a little bit magenta. So those are my choices. Make this a little bit magenta and try to get this as neutral as I possibly can, or make this neutral, 0, 0 in the A and B, and that's still going to be a little bit green and a little bit blue. I'm going to choose for Pull this down a little bit closer to magenta and see what I can do to get rid of this blue and get rid of the uh, uh, get rid of the green. In other words, I want those minuses to disappear in the A and B channel. And here's how to do it. Let's go to the A channel. Now the A channel handles again green is our minus values up here, and the magenta values are positive down here. So what I want to do is pull a little bit towards magenta. 
Now, the important thing here is this center line right here. My diagonal line crosses exactly through the center line, and I don't want it to. I want my line to be coming a little bit to the right of the center line, which will pull the entire image a little bit towards magenta. I'm going to take this guy in. I'm going to bring him in one, uh, one division. And then, as you can see, I'm at 10. And then I'm going to bring this guy. I'm going to try to balance it, but I'm not going to balance it all the way. I'm going to bring it to like 95, about half a box, yeah? There it is, half a box. Now, if you see, there's the center again right now. I'm just a little bit to the right in there. Let's take a look what happened to the numbers just on the green magenta side. Okay, I went into the plus six on the wall. That's a little bit towards magenta, and that's what I wanted to do. What happened in the snow here? Look at that, the A channel. The green has almost gone away completely, and it's down to one. One is acceptable, not bad. It's still pulling strongly into the blue with minus 25. I want to get rid of some of that blue. So what I'm going to do is come to the B channel. In the B channel, the minus numbers are blue up here. The positive numbers are yellow down here. I want to pull away from blue. So I'll go ahead and keep a straight line. I'm going to really crank this a little bit. I'm going to crank this at three right here. 30, three boxes. There's the center line. I want to make the center line to the right because I'm pulling it away from the blue area. So I'll go ahead and drag this one up, but it's not going to be three. I'm going to do like two, right? And I'm looking at my image here too. I'm going to keep it like right about, where am I going to put it? Right there? Let's take a look right there. It's at 79. I don't want it. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's just take a look at the numbers. Look at that. Okay, in the snow, I've still got minus 27 uh, on the B channel, so I'm still strongly into the blue here. On the wall, I'm minus 11 here into the B channel, which is just a little bit up into the blue. Still minus 27. I might want to drag this a little farther to the right. I want to drag out as much of that blue as I can, but I don't want it to be this awful yellow, say. So I want to get some kind of happy medium. What about, whoa, what about that? Okay, all right, the blue went down to minus eight. Not bad, not bad. I'm just a tiny bit up in the blue. I'm not going to be able to fix this completely, but I can get kind of close. Now it's looking, ooh, is it looking yellow? Let's look up into the trees here a little bit. I'm getting plus 14 in the trees. That's pulling on the yellow side. Plus 14 in the B pulls to the yellow. And the A is pulling mm, almost nothing into the green here. Okay. Do I want to? I might go ahead and leave that there. It's still looking just a tiny bit yellowish to me here. I'm 86. I might want to go up to 87. Let me pull that to... I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Maybe 85, one and a half boxes. See what happened there? Minus 10. Minus 10 in the B channel. So I'm still, I've gotten rid of a lot of blue. Again, I'm not going to be able to fix this darn thing completely. I'm going to go ahead and leave it, th leave it there for demonstration purposes only. What I might do at one point is I have made the strongest changes I can possibly make in LAB. The LAB curves are monsters. They are the bull in the china shop. And then I may go back to RGB and do some very, very fine tuning. One th last thing I want to do now is take a look in the lightness channel. And I want to see where my brightest bright value is and my darkest dark value is. So first thing I want to do is get back on my image, go to image adjustments threshold, Drag it all the way to the, I'm going to drag it all the way to the right. And the first thing that's going to come in is going to be, it's going to be the brightest of the brights. So where's the brightest? There it is coming in right. This one comes in first right here. Now, where is it? It is that center dome of the three of them. That's the brightest of the bright. 
Now, where is the darkest of the dark? What comes in first? There it is. Right. There are a few of them coming in, but I've got a strong one coming in right here. And that is right between the two domes of the triple on the right. It's right in there. Where is it? No, it's right at the base of the one on the right of the triple. Okay, good. Now, let's come back into curves again. We're in the lightness channel. I want to zoom this guy up way a lot. And I want to come over here. And I want to come into the brightest of the bright. Now I'm going to be looking only on L, yeah? So I'm getting an L value of about 90. Not strong enough. 91, not strong enough. And the darkest of the dark was right about down in here. And I'm getting a 26, not even close. I would like to see a, uh, a, a darkest of the dark hitting at about 6 or maybe 7 or something like that. That's not even close to the darkest. So the contrast in the image is horrible, too. One thing I'm going to try is setting the white point, and let's get the white point eyedropper and come down here and try to find my highest value, closest to 100 I can get. I think 95 is going to be about it. There it is. And click it. Now I'm going to come down and set the black point, click on that eyedropper. What was my lowest number about? Ooh, I had a 23. Oh my god, where are you? There it is. Uh, 24, rather, sorry. Good. I'll click that one and set the black point. Okay. And how did that do for the contrast? Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Much better. There's the before. There's the after. Much better. Okay. Beautiful. Now, finally, there's one thing I want to say about color casts. Look what we did on this image. We dragged out a tremendous amount of blue on this image by adjusting the B channel and making sure that it was way down from the center point. We took out a lot of blue. Now, if you noticed also, what we have done is we've made the gradient or the slope of this line much steeper in the meantime. We accomplished two things by doing this. Number one, we largely removed the blue cast from the image, but at simultaneously, if you look at the B channel numbers for these three domes right here, the values for the blue in the domes remained almost the same. Look what happened in the snow. We went from minus 25 to minus 10. That was a drop of 15 points, which is significant. What happened in the domes? Did it go down? Well, yeah, it did. It went down by four right there. It went down by three there. It went down by three over there, and it went down by one over there. This is one of the magic uh, things about the LAB color space. I dramatically removed the blue from the snow, but essentially the blue of the domes remained the same. This is impossible to do in RGB. It is simply impossible. You cannot do it. Only in LAB can you do something like this. So this is why I, I say LAB in terms of many, many things in fixing images is the bull in the china shop. It is the sledgehammer. It is monstrous what you can do with this thing and get excellent results and results that are simply and honestly and demonstrably impossible to get in the L, uh, RGB color space. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.